Here we go. Day four. And we're back. It's day four of the Bible study, and we're going to be talking about another great account from the scriptures where Jesus tells a parable. A parable is a story that isn't true, but it's about a true fact. In other words, it's making a real point. So this is going to be a, a great day. So again, let's get this day going. Z105. Okay, so far we've been learning so much in our study of the Bible. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to review all the amazing facts that, that we have learned, right? So, day one, we looked at the story of Pentecost. And if you remember right, Pentecost was when the disciples were all gathered together. There was a sound of rushing wind. The people heard it and they all gathered around the apostles. They saw the tongues of flame over the apostles' heads. And then the, the apostles were able to speak in other languages. It's amazing. Day two. We looked at the very early Christian church as they began preaching and teaching and how the people dedicated or devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and how they were selling all their stuff and they're working together as one church and they're always coming together for the breaking of the bread, which we found out was communion. Day three, we saw Jesus coming in and blessing the children. He brought infants even into his hand and says, unless you receive this kingdom like one of these, then you shall not enter it. And we remember, especially as we reviewed in our catechism that day, that baptism is Jesus blessing us as well, giving us his very name, which now brings us to day four, where we're going to talk about this naughty son and a father that just can't stop loving him. Inconceivable! 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 You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. It is a great account. Let's hear it from the Holy Scriptures. Boo! We're back in the sanctuary here, uh, up over on the up on the chancel where we've been before, and each day we've kind of reviewed some things. We're going to move on to some other things today. So we've talked about how. This is the lectern. Over there on the other side, we have the pulpit. And then back here, we have the altar. We've talked about this whole place is called the sanctuary. The sanctuary is this whole place where we come in for worship. The chancel is the part in the front where pastor and vicar work from or where people come to get communion. But now I want to go on to what I'm wearing today because we also have special clothing that we wear in, in the church as, as part of being uh, people of God, our pastors have, wore special clothing to show people that they're here to serve the Lord and to serve His people. Now, this outfit I have on today is called a cassock and surplus, okay? Now, the cassock is the black garment that I wear, and it's long. It goes all the way down uh, to the floor, right? And it's, it's made of black. It, it represents our sinfulness. The surplus is this white gown that flows over it, kind of almost looks like an an angel outfit that covers all the black, uh, kind of showing us that it is Christ's robes of righteousness that covers us sinners. So we're sinners and Christ's robe of righteousness covers us. You also know that I'm wearing a stole as well. And the stole is, is, uh, is wore over the top of the outfit and it shows the colors of the season of the church year that we're in. So I'm wearing a cassock, which is the black, a surplus, which is the white, and then the stole. I'm going to wear something different tomorrow to show you that as well. But now let's get to our reading for today. Our reading for today is, is the, the story is often called the story of the prodigal son. It comes from the Gospel of Luke chapter 15. Listen to these words. Jesus said, remember he's telling a parable, I told you that before. There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, Give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. There he squandered his property. It means he wasted it. In reckless living. 
And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And as he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he came, and he arose and came to his father. But while he was still away off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring the fattened calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son, who was in the field, as he came and drew near the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And the servant said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf, because he has received him back safe and sound. But this older son was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him, but he said to his father, Look, these many years I have served you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your property with horrible living, and killed the fat, you have killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found." This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, there is a lot to cover in this, and I'm not going to be able to do it all. So we're probably just going to have to sum it up here, if you will. So bear with me as we go through this. Now, in the story of this son, which really, that's not exactly right. We should call it a story of the father. In other words... We see the two sons there, but they're not the ones that we want to put the most attention onto. They're the ones that show us the extremes of things. But let's, let's go through this. So Jesus is telling a parable, and again, he's making this story up to make a very real point. And he talks about how this father has two sons. You heard that. Well, the younger one decides that he wants what's coming to him. But that's an interesting thing. Because guess when he should receive half of his father's inheritance? He should receive it when his father dies. In a way, this son is telling his father, I don't want you anymore. Uh, I don't even want to be part of your life. You're just as good as dead to me. Well, the father hears the voice of his son. He gives him half of his property. And the son goes off, and we heard what he did. He just wasted it all, lived a horrible, horrible life, things that we can't even, even mention. And, he, and it got so bad for him that he lost all his money. Then there was problems in the land, and there wasn't any food. There was a great famine in the land. Well, one day he's out there feeding pigs, and guess what? He's feeding those pigs, and he wants to eat what the pigs are eating. And he realizes, wait a minute, I've made a big, big mistake. I'll go back to my father. I'll apologize to him. And notice he prepares his apologies. And he, he talks about how he's sinned against both heaven and against his father. He acknowledges his sin before God and before his father. And he says, I'm going to tell him this. So I'm going to apologize to him. And I'm going to say, hey, you know, I don't want to be your son anymore. I've, I've lost that chance. I've ruined it. Uh, all I want to do is just be one of your slaves. Well, he doesn't even make it all the way home. Did you hear that in the story? It's great stuff. He's, he's on his way there and his father sees him and goes rushing out to meet him. You know, and this is the thing that we should focus on. This father could have anger. He could, you know, just want to have justice against him. He could be calling for punishment righteously. He could, you know, have him be punished for what he did. You know, all these kind of things. But the father 
in the midst of all this, even though his son wanted him dead, his father did not what his son did. He wanted his son to live. And when his son went off and the times were so bad, he thought he was as good as dead. He says that, I thought my son was dead. And so he rejoices to see his son alive because being his son doesn't have anything to do with his earthly possessions. You know, the fact that the son wasted his money, wasted the land, wasted all this stuff. Being a son is because that's who he is from the father. In other words, this is what the father sees in him. Even though the son didn't see it before, he didn't want to be his son anymore, the father never stopped wanting to be his father. Well, he gives him this feast, puts a coat on him, ring on him, shoes on his feet, and then kills his fattened calf for him. I mean, it's really kind of amazing that he does all this stuff for him because he's most excited that what was lost has been found. Now, we know the other son comes in, and he's all angry at the father as well. And the father, you know, tells him, listen, um, you've always had what I've had, you know. Um, th those are possessions, but, you know, I have you, and the son won't be a part of it. Now, again, I want to focus on the father. You see, the father's love never changes. He loves his sons even when they despise him for doing good like his older son did. He loves his son even when they don't even love him back when his son hated him and wanted to go off and be his own, be his own person, didn't want to be part of him. He always loves. Now, this father in the story is our father as well. All right, it is, uh, it is how he comes to us. And especially in Jesus, how he comes to us. Because in Jesus, then, we are baptized into his name. We receive the robes of his righteousness, okay? We receive the sons and daughters that the ring means. We are sons and daughters of, of the Most High. In Jesus, then, uh, you know, our, our feet are shod uh, with the, the gospel of truth. You know, we have all these things because of what the Father has given to us in Jesus. And that's why this father, this father who just seemed crazy in love with his son, is just like our Father in heaven. He's crazy in love with us that he would send his son to save us from all of our, from all of our sins. Now, today in catechism, you're going to learn about confession and absolution. And this is what this son comes to do with the father. He comes to confess his sins, both before him and the heavenly father. He comes to say, I'm sorry that I've done these things. You know, and this is what we go to church for. The pastor is there to hear the sins that you have committed and to announce God's or Jesus' forgiveness for you. All right? Now, you, we also do this between each other, but we don't call it confession absolution. We call it apologizing and forgiving, which is something that we should do as well. You know, that's why this son, you can see him confessing to God that he's, he's sinned against heaven, but also confessing to his father that, you know, I've sinned against you. And this is something that we need to do all the time because God is always ready to receive us. He's always ready to welcome us. He's, he's just a little bit crazy like that father in our story that just goes running out to meet a son, even a son that wanted him dead. And so this is what we learned from the story of the prodigal son is how much God loves us, how much Jesus loves us, and how he takes care of us, just as he took, this father took care of these two sons, even though the sons didn't always care for him. It's the nature of our God. It's who he is, which again is why we go to him as often as we can, confessing our sins, receiving his forgiveness, and knowing how much he loves us. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that Jesus has given us this parable of the prodigal son it shows us how much you have loved us, that you have indeed in baptism robed us with your righteousness, washed us clean for all of our sins, and, and continue to take care of us by giving us your word, which feeds our souls, and, and your holy supper, communion, which also feeds our souls with the forgiveness of sins and strengthening of faith and, and encouragement of love toward one another. We ask that you would help us to never despise this gift of confession and absolution, that when times are tough, we know where to go, when it feels like we're just eating the pig slop of this world and, and we're drudging our way through it, we know that we can come to you, acknowledge our guilt, and you always are there to receive us back. So help us to do this with willing hearts. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God's peace and blessings to you. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Last one, day five. I'm excited. <laughs>